Namaste. Well, over the last couple of days, we've gotten some interesting comments from the viewers. <laughs> and I just have to say something about them, especially in the context of the last two videos I did about Don't Call Me Guru and the other side of the coin. Or on the other hand, I think it's called. Anyway, you have to understand my platform and my purpose in offering and sharing my wisdom and experience. And that is, and really can only be, the ancient scriptures, the tradition. I'm here, you know, to, to quote Julius Caesar, huh? I'm here not to bury the tradition, but to save it. Let that sink in for a minute. I'm not here to rationalize away the scriptures. I'm here to defend them. I'm not here to make some sophisticated argument of why we don't have to do any sadhana or spiritual practices. I'm here to tell you, you must do them. Or you're not qualified for meditation for enlightenment. I don't know how many times in the last two years we've gone over the Chatur Darshanam, the Chatur Darshanam, the four views, the four stages or levels of enlightenment and realization, and the four yogas that are appropriate for the different stages of consciousness development. I don't know how many times, but yet I still get comments more often than I would like that, well, when you're talking about the Mahishasura Mardani Stotram or the Devi Mahatmyam, why don't you link that with the concentration on the void or something like that? It's like, duh. Or, oh, here's a really good one. Somebody, one uh, commenter was telling me that he was listening to a video about Kundalini. And the person presenting the video called it the pathless path. Like, duh. I said, this is California mindfuck bullshit. And then he wasn't happy with that. He went back and dug up an old video of mine talking in the context of Buddhism where I talk about the pathless path. And then he accused me of being a hypocrite. Idiots. All idiots. They just, just not getting it. Not understanding this teaching at all. If you go all the way back to the beginning, we talked about in matrix learning, how context creates meaning. If I say, shut the door, in the context of living in a house, let's say, the word shut means one thing. If I say the baseball game was a complete shutout, it means something completely different. Why? It's a different context. Context creates meaning. So when somebody brings up the pathless path in the context of Kundalini, it's completely out of context, completely inappropriate, because the Kundalini is the path. How can it be a pathless path? Duh. But in the context of Theravada Buddhism, or even or more even appropriate, is Zen. 
In the context of Zen, pathless path is perfectly appropriate. Can you understand this? To bring in, in the context of Devi Mahatmyam, to bring in the idea of meditation on the void, is completely out of context. Now, if we were talking about Devi Kalotra, in Devi Kalotra, the theme is meditation on the void. But you see, that's a Jatavada. That's a Jatavada. And Devi Mahatmyam is in the Vishishta Dvaitavada, the realm of bhakti, the view of conditional dualism, where one knows that the ultimate aim is non-duality, but one simply goes on with one's duties in the material world and gradually develops love of God through pious activities. See? Because people want to jump up without any qualification, they want to enter into the context of meditation and emptiness and silence and oneness and all of that. Without any preparation, without any qualification, without any punya, accumulation of pious activities. But this is not what is given in the scriptures. This is not the path. The path is you start at the bottom with pious activities. You offer prayers, you offer incense and lamps and water, arti ceremonies, many, many ceremonies. According to the rules and regulations of the scriptures, that's karma yoga. But nobody wants to do karma yoga because they think they're entitled to enter into meditation. And of course they fail. They fail and they get some so-called guru who's just a figurehead and spouting some jargon that neither they nor their students understand or have realized. In other words, they get cheated. They get cheated by some jerk selling a shortcut to enlightenment. There ain't no such thing. There is only the step-by-step -step path where first you do karma yoga and accumulate pious activities. And when that matures, automatically you develop love of God. And when that matures, you automatically develop meditation. Huh? It's not something you can do. It's something that's given to you, a blessing from higher authorities. Now, the problem today is that people are nihilistic and atheistic, and they don't want to accept the idea of higher authorities. Well, then who decides where you get born? And who decides when you die? And where you go after death? Is it you? Huh? Can you control your breathing and regulate the number of breaths you have in this life? Can you control your digestion and make sure that your food is fully digested so you don't get sick? Huh? Can you control anything? Really? No. No. And any belief that you can is simply ignorance. Ramana Maharshi said, and I read the quote just this morning, that everything about this life is determined at the moment of birth. And an expert astrologer can look and, and tell you day by day what's going to happen in your life. But people don't want to accept fate. Because of ego, they want to make an effort against it, not realizing that they simply play into the hands of fate by creating more karma because of their efforts. It doesn't change what happens. It just changes how they feel about it and the mental structures they create with their ego efforts. And that becomes the karma that creates the body in the next life. You know, this is what's described in the scriptures. But people don't want to accept it, so they make up some sophisticated rationalization. 
that, oh, the scriptures only apply to people who are raised in a certain cultural environment or some nonsense like this. Yeah, it's true. You are in a very degraded cultural environment. 90% or more of the people on this planet at this time are. But because you're an individual and because you can make efforts, you can get yourself out of it. You can get yourself into good association. You can get yourself educated in the scriptures. It's all there on the internet for free. Duh. Download them, study them, practice them, and you will get advancement. Now, if you don't have the blessing of the higher authority, you won't be able to do this. You'll look at me and you'll say, oh, look at him. He's got funny stuff on his forehead and he lives in a, some weird village in India. <laughs> I live surrounded by sadhus. On this side, there's a beautiful ancient Durga temple and many sadhus coming there. And on the other side, there's one guy who is an officer at Raman Ashrama, and across the street from them, there's a very nice married couple who are also good sadhikas. And on this side, I have a farmer who raises rice and cows. And behind him is Arunachala looking at me right now. Huh? So Arunachala, let your light fall on me and purify me. Uh, let your silence penetrate me and make me sane. Uh, I've been raised, just like most of you have been raised, in insanity, in, in crazy, entitled, lusty, materialistic Western society. And I got over it. I arranged my life in such a way that I could go to India regularly, and I did my whole life. And when I retired, I came here permanently. And now I live in a village, a beautiful place next to a lake and where there are cows and rice fields and lots of birds. Huh? I feed them every day. I have some pet peacocks now. They come every day. <laughs> and I'm surrounded by sadhus. And everywhere I go, people offer me respect, pranams, because I'm a swami. And they can see, they can understand. They have experience of lots of holy people. And they don't go to these new age neo-Advaita seminars and pay hundreds of dollars to hang out with some jet set media star. They worship in their homes, privately, like I do. I don't go to any temples. I don't go to any meetings. I don't go to any gurus. Huh? I found a guru inside. Every night when I lay down to sleep, I go into the light and the light is the mother. The light is consciousness. Consciousness illuminates everything in the world. And gradually I go through that light and I come out the other side into the realm of Shiva, the emptiness, the space, the darkness, the beauty of nothingness. Huh? This is how I end my day. And in, in, in mornings, this is how I begin my day, coming back from that into this world of illusion. Huh? So I have no problems with whatever happens <laughs> because I know this world is just a dream. Huh? You're caught up in it and you need help to get out. And that help is there in the scriptures. And that's why we post so many videos about the scriptures. And that's why you should take them very seriously and learn them and chant them and worship them to get out of the suffering of this conditioned material world. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.